Well, I think the first thing I want to say is that the, there's one huge difference between teaching general English and teaching academic English, and that's what you're trying to set out to achieve. So in general English, you're trying to get the learners to have conversations with people, mm -hmm. to listen to conversations on the fly, to be able to contribute fluently. Mm -hmm. And in academic English, you're trying to get them to read and understand texts and take ideas out of them so that they can write. Okay. So general English, focus on listening and speaking. Academic English, focus on reading and writing and very different texts in both of those situations. And I think it's really difficult for a communicative language teacher who's used to discussion activities in a class to think about switching to being a language teacher who needs to help students to write about real topics. Okay. I've looked at one or two of the lower level general English course books and in my view the, the writing component is simply to reinforce language that's being learned. Okay. It's, yep. it's not purposeful and I think that's the other important thing about English for academic purposes, it's purposeful. There's somewhere to go, an outcome to be achieved, whereas in teaching English for no obvious reason, which is how we sometimes phrase it, um, you, you're just wanting to use writing to reinforce the grammar that's being learned, for example, the words that are being learned. And yes, I agree, there are some um, uh, texts that, that learners will need to write in particular situations, but I'm not sure that learners actually work on texts they really need. So how many of us have ever needed to write a letter of complaint, which is one of the common things they work on? Um, you know, I, I don't think that, that um, anybody's really analysed the kinds of texts learners need. Whereas at a university, a lot of research has been done on the kinds of texts that students will need to read and what they'll have to write. Mm -hmm. um, different ways of trying to help them to write those texts have been researched. So, so big difference there, I think. Well, what we've tried to do is, in the first chapter, we've tried to highlight these differences in quite a bit of detail between what a general English teacher would typically do in the class and what an EAP teacher would typically do. So there's a big section looking at that. And then we've tried to give a, a, a gentle idea of the EAP context, what it's actually like to work in a university, what kinds of tasks students will have to do, what kinds of assumptions students make when they first come to university from overseas. So that's the first thing I think, to try to get general English teachers aware of the context. And then the next chapter, which is probably the biggest chapter in the book, and I think perhaps the most important one that informs all the other things, but then I'd say that, wouldn't I, because I wrote it. And that's the text analysis chapter, because a general English teacher is not used to thinking beyond the sentence. They're used to this moment-by-moment -moment talk that goes on in a conversation, whereas an EAP teacher has got to think about texts and whole texts and whole text processes. So text analysis takes is a little tutorial that takes the general English teacher through texts and looking at texts and analysing texts and then all the other chapters which are really standalone and they have labels that the general English teacher would recognise. So for example, example, reading, uh, vocabulary, listening and speaking, you could okay. dip into those, but they all rely on that text analysis chapter right. as the sort of underpinning for the way that they think about these skills. One of the things I think that makes EAP Essentials more accessible, which is perhaps not flagged up in the book, is that it has a set of classroom materials on a CD-ROM at the back of the book. Now there are 50 classroom materials which we've tried out in our classrooms and which have worked. And, and a teacher told me the other day that actually she found the book a bit daunting and she didn't want to read it. So she went to the CD first and she said, oh, just have a look in here and see if there's anything I could use in my class. So she found something, tried it out, thought that works, and then went to the chapter in the book that she could read up about to find out perhaps a little bit about why it works. So a tip for me would be to go to the CD-ROM first, start there and try out something in your class, and then that gives you an intro into the book.